My name is Dinyar Patel, and I'm the author of Naroji, Pioneer of Indian Nationalism, a new biography of Dadabai Naroji. Here in India, we all know a little bit about Naroji's life. We know that he was associated with the idea of the drain of wealth, uh, the idea that uh, British imperialism was causing mass impoverishment in India. We know that he was the first Indian elected to the British Parliament in 1892. Um, and we know that Naroji was somehow related with the idea of Swaraj, the idea of Indian self-government. But as I've tried to show in my book, Naroji was a much more interesting and a much more significant and complex figure than these three points uh, uh, make it seem. Uh, so in my book, what I really try to do is show Naroji as a person who was an Indian leader, uh, a person who was a leader in the British Empire and Great Britain, and also a leader in the emerging forum of global anti-colonialism, someone who really spanned political networks around the world. Now, here in India, his obvious importance began with his path-breaking economic ideas. Uh, we need to remember that in this era, uh, in the, the mid-1800s, uh, the idea that imperialism, imperialism was bad and that British imperialism in particular was causing such terrible impoverishment was a radical idea. I mean, when Naroji created a direct link through his economic data uh, between British imperialism and the famines that were killing millions of people in the late 19th century, uh, he was greeted uh, with a great deal of criticism, not just by uh, people in Britain, but people around the world. Uh, it was a tough idea to challenge, uh, the, the idea that British imperialism was, was uh, a bad thing. Uh, but Naroji showed in a very convincing manner uh, that it had, been, it had been doing terrible things economically and politically in the country. Now, the reason why Naroji went to Great Britain and campaigned for Parliament at this point in time was because at uh, this moment, Indian nationalism was at its very infant stages, and it was very difficult to achieve any sort of political reform uh, in India itself. Uh, so early nationalists like Naroji thought that their best bet was to achieve some sort of reform in Great Britain. And of course, there was no parliament or no sort of representative institution in India. Uh, so the closest thing you had was the British Parliament. Uh, Naroji won in 1892 by only five votes. He acquired the nickname Dadabai Narrow, Narrow Majority after that uh, particular um, uh, electoral win. Uh, and he tried during his short term in parliament to legislate political reform. And he spoke very forcefully about the need for uh, political reform. But ultimately, uh, he was not able to achieve much there. So in the last stage of his political uh, career, uh, he really decided to take his ideas to a global stage. Uh, he communicated with anti-imperialists in places like America or socialists uh, in continental Europe, uh, and he talked about why imperialism was a bad thing and why India needed self-government. Uh, so in the very last year of his political life, uh, he brought this idea of Swaraj to the Indian National Congress by establishing Swaraj as the political goal of the party. And this was an extremely significant moment because it swung the balance between moderates and uh, extremists more in the direction of extremists. And of course, from that point onward, Swaraj became completely tied in with the, the ideas of uh, Indian nationalism. Uh, Naroji was also someone who really mentored the next generation of Indians uh, who took on uh, the helm of nationalist political work. Uh, he worked with Gandhi, uh, he mentored people like Gokhale, he worked closely with others such as Ferocia Mehta and a whole galaxy of, of individuals who sustained Indian nationalism locally on the ground. Uh, so these are some reasons for why you might have an interest in learning more about Naroji. The, the, the first real uh, important Indian nationalist leader, uh, the first colonized subject to popularize the notion uh, in uh, Great Britain uh, and in the rest of the world that uh, colonialism was a phenomenally bad force uh, economically and politically.